And then I'm going to talk about uh, what Romans chapter 6 is all about is can be summed up in the last verse, okay? Uh, Romans chapter 6 is all about freedom, but before I do that, I have to tell you a story. Can, can you kids tell me what this is? Any of the kids tell me what that is? Can you see it? A train. What part of the train? The engine, yeah? Well, let me tell you a story about a train engine, okay? This train engine, the maker of it, wanted it to be happy all the time. And so he made tracks that went up into the mountains so he could see the snow. And he made tracks that went over to the ocean so he could see the ocean. And he made tracks that went through the valleys. And he made tracks that made, even went through the desert so he could see all the different parts of the world. Because the maker of this engine, he wanted him to be really happy. Somewhere along the line, someone whispered to him, Oh, but you're not free. He said, well, what do you mean I'm not free? I can go to the ocean. I can go to the mountains. I can go to the valleys. And they said, yeah, but you always have to be on those tracks. Because trains run on tracks, don't they? And so he began to think about it. And he was thinking, wait a minute. The maker didn't let me be absolutely free. I want to do what I do. And so one day, he was going across a field, and he thought, I'll just do what I want to do. And so he left the tracks. What happened? What happens to a train when he leaves the tracks? Celine, tell me, what, what happens? He does what? He gets stuck. Yeah, trains are really heavy. And when he started across the field, he just sunk down in the field. And he couldn't go anywhere. He could no longer go to the mountains. He could no longer go to the ocean. He could no longer go to the cities. He was stuck. He was stuck. And it, the point is that we need to understand what real freedom is. Real freedom is to be what you were designed to be. God designed you. And he has a wonderful plan for your life. And that's what freedom is. Freedom is not doing what you want to do. My freedom stops at the nose of my neighbor. Okay? So I, I, I gotta stop. My freedom stops right there. And there are limits to freedom. In chapter 6, let me read you just the first verses here. It says, Well then, should we keep on sinning? so that God can show us more and more of his wonderful grace? Of course not. Since we have died to sin, how can we continue to live in it? Or have you forgotten that you were joined with Christ Jesus in baptism? We joined him in his death, for he, we died and we were buried with Christ in baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, so now we may live new lives. Then I'm going to drop down to verse 15. Question comes up again. Well, because of all this grace, well then, since God's grace has set us free from the law, does it mean that we can go on sinning? Of course not. Don't you realize that you become the slave of whatever you choose to obey? You can be a slave to sin, which leads to death. Or you can choose to obey God, which leads to righteous living. Thank God, once you were slaves to sin, but now you wholeheartedly obey this teaching and we, that, was given, that we have given to you. Now you are free from the slavery of sin, and you have become slaves to righteous living. And I'm going to go on and read to the end. It says, because of the weakness of your human nature, I'm using an illustration of slavery to help you understand all this. Previously, you let yourselves be slave to impurity and lawlessness, which led, to deep, led you deeper into sin. And now you must give yourselves to be slaves to the righteous living so that you can become holy. 
When you were slaves to sin, you were free from the obligation to do right. And what was the result? You are now ashamed of the things that you used to do, things that end in eternal doom. But you are now free from the power of sin and have become slaves to God. Now do those things that lead to holiness and result in eternal life. And here's the, here's the conclusion. This is where we'll just look for a minute. You, the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, or Christ Jesus, our Lord. A great contrast at the end there, isn't it? How many of you, uh, when you work, you, you like to get your salary? None of you? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. When you work, you want to get the salary. You're looking forward to it. You want, you want to get paid. You work for it. It's yours. You deserve it. What about a gift? Is a, is a gift earned? Can you earn a gift? No. It wouldn't be a gift, would it? <laughs> it would be salary if you earned it. And so the contrast is between what we have earned and deserve and what we do not earn and do not deserve. We all have sinned. And we deserve to be separated from God. That's what, that's what death is. Death here is not talking about physical death. It's talking about spiritually being separated from God. We deserve that because we rejected his love. We chose to go like the little train off on our own paths. And we sunk down deeper and deeper in sin. And we're ashamed of some of those things. I'm so glad that you don't know all the things that were in my life. Because I'm ashamed of those things that sin led to. And sin leads to deeper sin and to deeper sin. It's kind of like telling a lie. If you tell someone a lie, what happens? You have to tell three more lies to cover that lie. And then four more lies to cover those lies. And it just goes down and down and down. But the gift of God, not earned, not deserved, only by His grace. He wants you to have eternal life. He wants you to be free and to enjoy life to its fullest. Uh, some people have looked at Christianity and said, oh, it's too narrow and too confining. It's kind of like tracks, isn't it? If you stay on the track, it's not confining. You can go anywhere. When I was in Bible college, uh, we were young preacher boys. And uh, we had, the, they had this great opportunity for us that we would go and preach in jails. And so we went to a jail. And in that jail, it was pretty, it was pretty good because no matter how bad we preached, they couldn't leave. <laughs> we, we really had a captive audience. Uh, it was a little county jail, so it wasn't like a big prison, there wasn't a chapel. We just stood in the hallway and preached, loud as we could. And even if they didn't want to hear, they had to hear. They were a captive audience. But at the end then, we would kind of spread out and say, would you like to talk about what we said? Or talk about God, talk about the Bible. And it didn't happen to me, but it happened to one of my very best friends, uh, John Connor, who later became a missionary in Africa. John went over to one of the cells and he was talking to a man and, and, and he said, would you like to give your heart to the Lord? Would you like to be a Christian? And the man said, oh no, I, I, I don't want to be a Christian. And John said, why not? And he said, oh, he's holding the bars. And he said, Christianity is too confining. <laughs> and, and John kind of looked to see what side of the bars he was on. <laughs> and that's the lie that Satan loves to tell people. That Christianity is confining when the absolute opposite is true. Sin is so confining. Do you want to be free? Then accept the gift that God has offered to you in Jesus Christ. And when we accept that by faith, we are set free. We are free not just to be free from punishment, we are free to live and to enjoy abundant life forever. Abundant life that starts right then. 
not later. Would you bow your heads with me for just a moment? I think that most of you have already prayed this prayer, but perhaps there is someone here today that has realized that it is only through acceptance of Jesus Christ that there's real freedom. And if you would pray this prayer, Father, I know that I have sinned and I ask you to forgive my sins and to cleanse my heart and become the Lord of my life. Set me on the path that you have made for me so that I might have freedom in Christ, so that I might be all that you created me to be. I ask it in Jesus' name, who died upon the cross for my sins and rose from the grave to prove his power over sin and over death. We ask in his name, amen. If you pray that simple prayer by faith, and believe it. God has said, I will forgive your sins. If we confess our sins, he says, I will forgive your sins. He says, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will open that door, I will come in to him. And so that's your choice. Do you want to be free or do you want to take your own path and get bogged down in sin and sink down till there's no chance? to have freedom in Christ. May the Lord bless you.